Welcome into the studio. We are comparing a couple of very popular Creality machines, the Ender 3 V3 KE and the Ender 3 V3 SE. Can you tell which is which? I'll give you a couple seconds. This is the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE, and this is the Creality Ender 3 V3 KE. Did you get it right? Tell me in the comments below if you guessed right. Well, we're about to take a deeper dive and we're gonna compare all of their features and their prints. Let's go. Okay, if you didn't guess correctly, that's all right. They're almost identical machines, but let's jump right into some of these differences. Which of these machines, the SE or the KE, do you think has a bigger build volume? All right, well, the SE comes in at 220, 220 by 250 on the Z, and the KE, surprisingly, comes in at 220, 220 by 240 on the Z. Now there is one more slight difference here and that is that the KE has a textured PEI sheet versus the SE has a smooth PEI sheet and both printers have the same maximum build plate temperature of 100C. Now this feature you should have been able to spot from there and that is the interface. On the SE it is a 3.2 inch color display with a click wheel and on the KE it is a 4.3 inch color touch display. Another obvious difference that you should have been able to spot from there, and that is the filament runout sensor on the KE. It's right up here and the SE doesn't have one. I know that they're really trying to separate these printers from one another, but to be honest with you, I think filament runout sensors uh, should just be on every 3D printer, but it is a difference. Now, it can be very easily added to the SE. They're not very expensive, just a couple of bucks. Now, which one of these printers do you think is single Z? Trick question. They're both single Z linked up here at the top with a belt. If you were paying attention, you'd notice that the tool heads look a little bit different and it goes a little bit deeper than just looks. On the SE, it has a max nozzle temperature of 260 degrees, while on the KE, it's 300 degrees. They're both running Creality Sprite Extruder. However, on the KE, it's upgraded, obviously to compensate uh, for higher temperatures, but also uh, TPU runs really well on this machine. Now they both have the CR Touch, for bed leveling, and the SE is designed really more specifically for your PLAs, your PTGs, your TPU, things like that, lower temperature filaments, while the KE is positioned a little bit better to do PLAs, PTGs, TPUs, even ABSs and ASAs, but you'd have to run those in an enclosure anyway. Now, those of you with eagle eyes, you should have been able to spot this because I can see it in my monitor, but that is a V-wheel right there. So the SE uses a traditional V-wheel uh, configuration for the X gantry for moving the tool head, while the KE uses a 12 millimeter rail, and that's just gonna provide you with a little bit more uh, accuracy and I would say smoothness, so better quality prints. Oh, and before I forget, they both use linear rods on the Y, which is pretty standard. Let's talk about printing speeds. On the SE, it has a max printing speed of about 250 millimeters per second, and it is Marlin, and that's pretty fast for Marlin. You're gonna be probably printing around 180 millimeters per second likely on this machine. Now on the KE, it has a max printing speed of up to 500 millimeters per second, and you're probably gonna be printing more or less around the 300 millimeters per second. That's gonna be pretty common. And this is Clipper. So Clipper is the reason why you're able to print so fast on the KE versus Marlin on the SE. Now, how do you get your sliced up G-code from the slicer to the machine? Well, each machine does it a little bit differently. The SE does it with a full-size SD card. Load your G-code on this, walk over and physically put it in the machine. On the KE, you load it on a USB key, come over, put it in your interface, or you can also do it over the wireless network. And the KE also has Creality Cloud, so you can load models and print, from your mobile device. Now, because this has access to your local network, this is really important. This is running Clipper. This is a full computer. And when you connect it to your local network, it allows people to do things like that. I didn't do that. There's a Creality Print web interface that is enabled when you connect it to your local network. And it allows anyone on the same local network to fully control this 3D printer. And that's really important, and there's no way for you to restrict permissions when it comes to that with this particular uh, installation on this Creality KE. Now, that is a really big difference between these two machines. So either understand that and choose this machine, or know what you're doing. Or ask for help from someone that's a little bit more technical.
And remember, you don't have to connect it to your local network to transfer files to it. It can be done via USB key like it's always been done. So keep that in mind. You can enjoy the speed and the features of the KE. You just don't have to connect it to your network if you don't feel comfortable. All right, before we get on to looking at the print quality, let's talk about price. The Ender 3 V3 SE comes in at $199 USD and the Ender 3 V3 KE comes in at $279 USD. So that's an $80 difference between these two machines and very different budgets. If you're limited to $200, this is a fantastic machine. If you had a little bit more of a stretched budget, then this machine at $279 is a fantastic deal. Now, Let's take a look at print quality, and then I'm gonna wrap it up with who I think these machines are for. And we are printing. I found a model on printables. It's a little Nintendo keychain, so I went ahead and blew it up to 300% and loaded it on both machines. I sliced it in Creality Print, that's their slicer. I selected each machine, and I selected the default profile for their Hyper Series of PLA. So you'll notice both PLAs exactly the same. Now I wanna say thank you to Sane Smart for sending us over this KE. We appreciate it and we have another machine coming from them and uh, we'll look forward to getting that one. And I wanna say thank you to Geek Buying for sending us over the SE, all right? So sit back, relax. We'll put together a little printing montage of these two machines and I'll be back with the print results in just a moment. The prints are done, as you can see. They took about two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, this one was a, a few minutes more, which is weird because it's a faster printer, but it didn't really matter. They were both printing at about the same speed, uh, between 100 and 120 or so millimeters per second. But the default profile in the Crowley Slicer had this one with more infill, which was weird, but that's the way it was. Now this is gray filament. And I don't know if you know this, but gray filament is unforgiving. There's no hiding anything, it shows it all. So as you're looking at this B-roll, you're gonna see over here that the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE looks pretty darn good. I would say that at this speed, of about 100, 120 millimeters per second, um, that's as, as close to perfect as you're gonna get off of uh, a machine like this. And uh, the quality I think is great. I would be, I would be very, very, very happy to receive this uh, from a $500 machine, let alone a machine that is a hundred and uh, what is it, $199? That's pretty impressive. All right, so now taking a look at the print from the KE. Now this one, like I said, printing at the exact same speed had quite a bit more infill. I would say that it handled the filament a little bit better as far as temperature goes, but it's great. And I would say that putting these two side by side I don't think that you could tell which machine that they came from, and I think both of them are incredible results. And in the end, that's kind of what I wanted to happen because I've had a lot of experience with the SE and I've had a lot of experience with the KE, and looking at them, the print quality is just so darn good for either machine. It really comes down to your preference as far as, do you wanna print with some more exotic filaments? Um, on this one, put it in an enclosure. Do you want the speed, uh, the tinkering capabilities of Clipper? What is it that you want? The unboxing and assembly was the identical because the structures are the same. And the first print experience was absolutely perfect on both machines. So it really comes down to what's the print quality and the feature set. Print quality, identical as far as these speeds are concerned. And then the potential on this one with Clipper and some of the other kind of bells and whistles that we talked about before, that's what really sets it apart. So a budget, $200, go with the SE. If you have a little bit more in your budget you could stretch, then it's up to you, the KE. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll have links in the description below for both of these machines and uh, in the filament that we used. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one.